Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Your Best Lifestyles International Podcast. I am your host, Terrence Hutchinson, right here at the Old Robinson Public Relations and Media Group Studios, right here in the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia. We're actually in Marietta. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another exciting episode of the Your Best Lifestyles International Podcast. We are happy to have you guys with us, and we are super excited for all the love that you've been sharing from all over the world. It's such a such a beautiful thing, man. I can't look. So much gratitude to you guys for all that, man. I appreciate you for showing that love, for subscribing, for downloading, for advertising with us, for sponsoring the program, for listening to us in the traffic, whether you're on your job, you're in the gym, you know, whatever you're doing, we appreciate you guys, man. Thank you so much. You know, we live in 52 countries at 1.3 million listeners. We appreciate the love, man. The only thing we're trying to do is try to bring you dope content with some dope people who are doing dope things all over the world. It's such a big deal to highlight these individuals, man. They're doing some, some beautiful things, and we're really appreciative of having them in the building right now, man. So, you know, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are having an amazing week this far. It's Wednesday. It's hump day. For a lot of y'all who work in your job, y'all love to say, oh, it's hump day. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. Every day is a Friday for us. We love it. Every day is a weekend for us. We love it. We appreciate the life. You know, we just like you. We're on the job. You know, we talk about hump days and we hate Mondays. You know, we love Fridays. We just like you years ago before we jumped that corporate ladder, man. We got out of that rat race. So I hope you guys are doing well. You guys are taking care of yourself mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, environmentally, occupationally, all these different wellness components. We hope that you guys are doing just that. It's a lot going on in the world right now, a lot of distractions. You know, everything is happening at at five speed at 5G speed, excuse me, so we want you to pay attention and be uh, aware of what's going on. Keep your head on a swivel, baby. You know, that's what's up, man. So make sure that you're hitting the gym, or if you can't go to the gym, you move that coffee table to the side or walk and do some push-ups, jump jacks, whatever do. Walk your dog, mow the lawn, whatever it is. Just keep that body moving, man. An idle body is not going to do you any justice, man, when you're trying to work on your job, run a business, be an entrepreneur, whatever it is, man. If you're broken down and sick and a weak immune system and stiffens up the joints and you're obese and you're eating like crap, you're not going to make no money. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to tell you like that, man. A very active person that's going to be a very successful entrepreneur. I'm going to be honest with you right now, man. i never seen an entrepreneur who's, you know, who's not putting in 100%, you know, taking care of themselves because you're not really going to make no money, depending on who you are, depending on what you're doing. But when you're sick and you're injured, you don't feel like doing that. You don't want to talk to nobody. You want to go out to meet no clients. You don't want to make those cold phone calls, none of that stuff like that. But when you're feeling energetic, when you're feeling vibrant, and everything is moving just right, guess what, man? It's going to show up in your money. It's going to show up in your business. Trust and believe that, man. So I hope you guys are doing well, that you're eating the right foods. You're staying away from the processed stuff. You're staying away from the ultra-processed stuff, the fast, junky food. You're staying away from most of the alcohol. You know, you're staying away from, from being a self-addict, the cigarettes, the drugs, all that stuff like that, man. Do your best that you can. If you need help, go seek help, okay? I know a lot of you guys are going through some things right now, and you need some type of uh, uh, a stimulant to help you get over the hard times, man. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. But let me tell you something, man. Clear your body out of those toxins. Clear, clear your mind out of those distractions. There's a lot of uh, mental distox- uh, 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 de- detox your mind as well. You know, so get out there and do the best that you can, man. Yeah. So we're in Atlanta. You know, I know a lot of you have been complaining, but the rain is, is going to rain all the way up to next week. Get over it. <laughs> get over it, okay? I know y'all want to do the hot Atlanta thing. We had a couple of days in last week that was 90 degrees, and y'all just lost your mind out here, okay? But now it's right back to 70 degrees, 69, 50 in the morning, whatnot like that, high 75. You know, hey, man, it's better that than hell. 
And we're getting thunderstorms in Atlanta. That means somebody's getting crazy hail and 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 and, and, and uh, 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 hurricanes or whatever it is, man. We're getting hit, but that's okay, man. Take it with a grain of salt. At least it's not snow. Okay, you don't have to shovel rain. <laughs> yeah, man. So pay attention to that, man. There's a lot going on in Atlanta. Hope you guys are taking full advantage of of the concerts, even though the rain is coming down. That's all right. But um, go out there and do your thing, man. You know, it was Juneteenth the other day. Hope you guys celebrate that. You go out there and, and show a lot of support and gratitude for all the groups that was performing out there and getting it in, man. So that's a beautiful thing. Oh, shout out to everybody who came out to the movie premiere of Finding a Perfect Guy by BBR Productions soon to be uploaded on all streaming platforms. What a beautiful thing, not just the ones that you know about. We're talking about uh, South Africa. We're talking about uh, uh, Nigeria. We're talking about Detroit, Canada, Italy, all these different uh, streaming platforms, man. So we're really excited about uh, Butterby Production, Butterby Rocker Productions, BBR Productions, man, got the first film popping out there. And be looking forward to soon, soon to be on Amazon Prime. When everything clear out, it's going through quality control right now. And when that thing clear out, man, it's going to go crazy. Shout out to everybody that came to the uh, the movie premiere. It's Sold so out in two weeks. You know, hey, it's dope, man. We, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Okay, we appreciate you guys, man, for coming out and doing, and doing us a good old favor. Ain't nothing but love. Ain't nothing but love. So yeah, listen, man, we get in. I'm going to get into my guest, you know, my guy here, Mr. David Robinson. He is the owner of – he is the owner of <laughs> – uh, The owner of Anti-Job University, no, 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 Anti-Job no, no. Philly. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're interrupting me, bro. <laughs> you're interrupting me. You're interrupting me. Since you done said it, and then, you know, anti-job university, but I was going to give you some more plug-ins there. You jumped in. The name of the school, the YouTube channel, is Anti-Job University, where they teach entrepreneurship through asset ownership, rapid wealth creation, through applying leverage and compounding these assets. They use biblical business principles to guarantee that the family uh, the formula works every time, no matter the business industry. The YouTube channel is anti at anti university backslash videos for most promotional websites, uh, asset empire access dot site. Go check them out. Welcome to the show, David Robinson. How you doing today, King? I'm all right, and you? I'm good. I'm good. And I'm good. And you calling from Panama right now? Yes, sir, Panama. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now, is that Panama your 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 second home, or what's going on over there? Uh, no, this is a permanent home. Thank God. Permanent home right now. Yes, sir. Were you, yes, sir. Were you born and raised there, or did you just you know? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, unfortunately, I still have U.S. citizenship, but uh, nah, you know. Um, eventually we'll be getting our permanent residency in Panama. That's what's up. That's what's up. So why Panama? Um, well, weather, um, the laws, opportunity, the people are nice here. Um, it, it, it's just a beautiful place and, uh, you're allowed to own things that you, you own, if you know what I mean. In the U S uh, you can purchase something, but you don't really own it. Uh, you really don't have the rights to it. Uh, people can take it back, you know, such as land and, and all of that extra stuff here. You actually get incentives to participate in the ownership of certain things. Yeah, you know, so it's just a welcoming place, especially for people like uh, me. Awesome, man. Awesome. That sounds good. How long you been over there now? Uh, we've been in Panama uh, for a little over a year, but we haven't been in the U.S. since 2020. Okay, right during the pandemic season, the scam demic. Yeah, 
Yeah, scandemic. Right at the beginning, we we left and we went to Florida for a couple months, and then we when we realized Mexico was open, we went straight to Mexico and stayed there for two okay. years. Okay, okay, okay. That's what's up, and just fell in love with it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So let's talk about Anti Job University. What we'll made you come up with the with the uh, with the title for that? What was that um, aha uh, moment for you? <laughs> Well, it used to be, you know, a little bit more brutal than that. Uh, it was Effa Job University. It started uh, at the end, you know, I quit working my nine-to-five job in 2014. I was mm-hmm. driving the, the city bus in St. Louis for Metro. Um, before that, I was an over-the-road truck driver, and I, I've been working a lot of jobs. I had a, a lot of jobs since since I was probably like 13 years old, been a flight attendant, all type of stuff, and nothing ever sat well. And it was not because I was lazy. It was not because uh, I didn't really like the activities of the jobs. It was because I didn't like the politics and I didn't like the authority over me. I didn't like for another human being to be able to give me another human being, another grown man, um, the right to do things, the right to say things, to write, the right to see my family, the right to have emergency time or whatever. It just felt like slavery because it is, um, mm-hmm. especially to the entrepreneurial spirited people. And you know it is. If you're an entrepreneur, you know it doesn't matter if they give you a raise to where it's fifty dollars an hour. You know, it's still something telling you 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 you're not supposed to be there. And that's because that's right. another plantation. So, um, F a job was birthed from that. Like you get to the point where it's just like I don't care how much you pay me. We I realized that I realized that if you're willing to pay me that much, I'm worth so much more. And they threaten you or they bribe you. And and you just have to be able to say F a job. So the reason why it's anti-job now is because it's a little bit more professional than the previous version. Mm, mm, That's what's up. That's what's up. As I mentioned earlier, when I was doing my announcements, you know, I left the corporate world in 2017 myself because of the same reasons, man. I was like, I can't do it. You know, having to ask somebody, can I take PTO time and you know, you got to do every other weekend, every third weekend. And I was like, man, I want to go out of the country. I need, I need, I, I need to go. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. More, you know, so I understand it, man. Having a boss, look, it's not for me. And the crazy thing about that, Mr. Robinson, is like this: when I came up through high school, that they 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 jammed that down our throat, man. Go to college, get good grades, get a career, work forty yeah. hours or forty. 40 years <laughs> and yeah, that, exactly. that, yeah that don't work so what what type of advice can you tell entrepreneurs right now who want to leave a job uh well i would tell them there are formulas to making money okay so and there's a difference between making money and making history so first off you might say to yourself well i just need to make money first so that i can get away from this because there are different layers to the matrix. It's kind of like a an onion. Uh, you're, you're still not free. I'm still not free. You know, once you break out of one matrix, which is the job, then there's a matrix of entrepreneurship in, where you can put the shackles on yourself and create your own job. And you're thinking to yourself, man, I might as well stay at the nine to five job, right? So mm. what I would tell people is to first focus on uh, figuring out what their gift is. And your gift is not necessarily your passion. Now, you're blessed if your gift aligns with your passion, and awesome. But don't forget what a gift is. A gift is something that you give to others, okay? Your passion is something that's for you. But God is more concerned with your gift. That's what he sent you here with, all right? Christ was sent here. His gift was to preach the kingdom and to die for us to get entry into it. So our purpose is to wake up, figure out what our gift is, 
and then serve it to the people. And he said he will give us the desires of our heart when we do that. Okay. That will include no more poverty. That will include the freedom to travel because he said this world was created for our sakes, not just the block or, or the city that we used to or something. You can take this whole world. Um, so one of the formulas I would give entrepreneurs is number one, relevant traffic plus irresistible offer equals money. Okay. When you think of the word traffic, just replace traffic with people or audiences. Okay. Irresistible offer. How do you serve them? What are you going to serve them in order to change them from their situation or whatever? Once you pick people and that offer or that service, the money is effortlessly made. Okay. Um, the second formula is positioning plus leverage equals profit recycling. Position what? Okay, that's your brand, that's your service, or that's your name. Okay, you position yourself to leverage others to profit recycle. Where did I get this formula? Am I just pulling rabbits out the hat, making things up? No, everything I know is biblical business principles. This is how the biggest companies in the world operate, whether they believe in God or not. This is where they get their formulas from, okay? Uh, God says it is better to obey God rather than man, okay? So even the Microsofts of the world, the McDonald's of the world, they use the formula that I am going to give you guys today, okay? So position yourself, unique. What is special about you, Okay? When when you think of the word positioning, just replace it with this, because I don't know the uh, the business education level of the people listening right now, so I'll just assume everybody is on the same level I was when I first started. Okay, so positioning. Why should a person purchase your stuff? They have a million options out there. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, you, you sell a fruit or food product, but then when you go down that aisle in a grocery store, there's four or five other options. Why should they choose yours? Okay, the answer to that is your unique positioning. Okay, that's why they should pick me. Now, leverage others. Some of the biggest companies in the world, they associate themselves with other companies so that it can speedily increase their authority, their credibility. All right. Instead of starting from scratch. Now, another thing that we leverage is other people, other people's time, place, efforts, um, money, credit, uh, networks, accounts, all of that. OK, for example, the biggest companies, they use affiliates and they use internships. What is another word for slavery? An internship, okay? <laughs> so that's free labor. So you take it from the, the people that are doing it. They say select, uh, success leaves clues. How was America built? An unpaid internship. Uh, how was Egypt created into the most successful, uh, uh, you know, power, powerful country of all time? Well, us being there under an uh, internship, just like over here, over in the U.S., right? So you leverage others. It's formulas to it. They all know it. They all know it. You position yourself to leverage others to profit recycle. So what's that last step, profit recycle? You, that's spend vesting. I call it spend vesting. That's where you're spending money only on things uh, that will come back to you, but even if they're, they're uh, what do you want to call them, for leisure or pleasure, how do you make it to where it will always come back to you? I'll give you an example. If you purchase a suit, okay, well, you didn't just purchase a suit to go out on a date or something. Maybe this is the suit that you're going to be wearing in promotional magazines or something like that, blah, 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 okay? So that's just a, 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 an example to throw out there, okay? So you put majority of the money back into the business that keeps the flywheel moving, making sure it feeds itself uh, and everything runs seamlessly. Okay. Uh, any questions before I move on, sir? Yeah. Yeah. We, um, you talking about um, leveraging. What about leveraging other people's audiences? 
Exactly. That's exactly what we're doing right now. See, practice what we preach. If it was not for this brother right here, most of you would not know who or, uh, or have an introduction to me. There's a million channels on YouTube. There's a million companies out there. There's a million coaches or whatever, blah, blah, blah. So uh, leveraging other people's audiences. Thanks for bringing me back to that point. Remember when I said everything I know is from scripture. I'm not, a, I used to like Greg Cardone. That's cool. Uh, Alex Hormozzi, <laughs> these people are all, no, 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 for real. Like they're cool, but they're humans and they're men and men are flawed. Okay. Um, so the scripture says, come to him, right? He will lead us and he will direct all our paths. But when we hear that in scripture, like we're so used to being part-time lovers of God. Okay. So we'll say, okay, when I want some spiritual healing or when I want to feel good, I go to church and he can help me with that. Right. But God don't, God don't know nothing about this business stuff. He don't care nothing about this. This ain't got nothing to do with my soul. Well, he said he would wish that we are prosperous in health, wealth, and in life. Okay, well, he understands that in this captivity that we're in right now, money, the devil runs this world using money. So this is why he said money is a defense and those with wisdom have, and money has the excellency. So if you pair money and wisdom together, you can have an excellent life. Okay. So he directs all paths. We try to dissect him and say, okay, he's all powerful, but he don't know nothing about this business. So, no, he knows everything. Mm -hmm. All right. To the point to where he sent his son here as a representative. So, how did Christ position himself? He was the only begotten, the only, he can say he's the only begotten son. So you need to figure out in your business, with your product or service, how many onlys can you fill in the blank? Finish that sentence with your product or service. I am the only blank company that offers blank. I am right. the only book author that has written about blank. You're right. Because when you do that, now you're answering that question of why a person should deal with you. Okay, so why should a person trust Christ? Because he was the only one that can offer us the kingdom that can prove his uh, uh, alliance when get with God as a man in the flesh. All right, so he was positioned with his miracles and everything he did as the only begotten son. Then how did he, how did he do what the brother just said? How did he leverage audiences? How did he leverage others? Very simple. Um, even though he was the most powerful being to ever walk the earth and he could have forced us to love God, he didn't want to do that. So he made himself with no reputation, made himself just like a regular guy, just like that song, What of God was one of us, right? But he understood me going out there as a regular person, even if I am God's son, if I just go on the corners and start yelling to people, hey, repent because the kingdom is at hand. Ain't none of them going to listen to me because I positioned myself as nobody when I first came here, right? So he immediately thought, kind of like what I did with, with you, who already has the ear and the trust of the people? Who already has the audience of the sinners that actually want to repent and get the kingdom that don't believe that they can be saved because of the, what the Pharisees are telling them? Okay, mm -hmm. so in, in this instance, who has an audience of people that are uh, uh, interested in becoming entrepreneurs or becoming better entrepreneurs already? Instead of me starting from scratch, starting from the bottom, trying to win their trust, we already know that word of mouth advertising and referrals are the most powerful form of marketing. So if I can get endorsed by someone that has a bigger reputation with this audience than myself, I don't have to start from scratch. I can siphon off some of that trust and authority immediately, which is why you see a lot of brands connect with each other, which is why you see regular right. people pay for, for pictures with celebrities, because you automatically seem to think that there's someone, why else would this celebrity be dealing with them? Right. So Christ, even though he was all powerful on earth, he went to his cousin, John the Baptist, and he associated himself with him because John the Baptist was a good man throughout all the land. Everybody traveled near and far to come be baptized by him. So John was like, yo, you're more holy than me. Why are you trying to you know, deal with me? And Christ was like, dude, you have the authority right here. People trust you. They don't they don't really know me like that. Right. 
So once he did that, immediately, everybody wanted to follow him because he was powerful already. He was already doing miracles, but so was a whole bunch of uh, warlocks and sorcerers back then and witchcraft practitioners and weirdos like that. So the only thing that separated, uh, well, a lot separated them, but as far as the perception of the people, what now separated Christ from any of those other hocus pocus people was the fact that they, he, he had legitimacy behind him. Now he had John the Baptist himself backing him up saying, yo, this dude is more righteous than me. This is the dude you're supposed to be following. So this is literally what I'm doing right now. You guys never met me. You don't know me. Uh, but now I'm associated with this man right here who owns this audience that is uh, uh, familiar with you guys, that, that has brought you value and everything, and he wouldn't put nobody in front of you that is not there with the right intentions. So that's, right. Leveraging, right. that's leveraging others. Awesome. Let me ask you a question. So uh, by biblical principles over the law of attraction, how do you feel about it? I know you. I know you. I know how you feel about it. But tell me, uh, do you feel that that people are really super convinced of using the law of attraction over biblical principles? Like once, like say, it's chicken soup for my soul. And when the when the book come out, the law of attraction, everybody flocked to it, and it seemed like they got away from the biblical uh, principles. How do you feel about it? Um, well, I feel like uh, we are always seeking a way out. <laughs> We're always mm. seeking to be able to f- figure out how to do some type of hack to where it's not really on us to uh, uh, be successful or make it somewhere. And and to a certain extent, there's there's a point there, but then we come with this. I, and I'll come back to that point of we shouldn't let our success just be on us. I'll come back to that. But as far as law of attraction, the uh, I mean, listen, I can't force you guys to believe anything. Um, but this is this is what I know. OK, uh, the scripture says there there is no like it's no point. Faith without works is dead. Faith right. without works is dead. So a lot of us, we wake up and we learn the tactics to make money, okay? But we don't actually believe that those things will be successful, no matter what. If you don't believe it, then you're not even going to complete those tasks. This is why there's a small percentage of successful entrepreneurs, because when you get to those dark days, if you can't see yourself in those positions, you're not even going to complete your to-do list. You see what I'm saying? Um, now, as far as law of attraction, I, I don't believe in, in um, um, you know, it's good to do positive self-talk and, 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 and a lot of these different things. And, but I don't believe in, in just the speaking in a mirror, manifestation, magical, crystal, idolatry type stuff. I don't <laughs> believe in that. I don't believe yeah. in that, right? Um, but I do believe in speaking things into existence because our father who art in heaven spoke everything into existence. All right. So law of attraction is, is that a version of that? It depends. You have to bring a little bit of adulthood in there, meaning common sense. Okay. When he spoke things into existence, what do we like to call ourselves? Bosses, CEOs. Okay. That is speaking things into existence meaning giving the order and creating the systems and then allowing your supervisors or managers to have it. Okay. What do I mean by that? Okay. When you read the beginning of Genesis, it says the word was with God. Who is the word, the manifestation in the flesh? That is Christ. So even at the beginning, Christ was there with him. Okay. So who built the word, the actual world? who actually laid the foundations and everything. It was Christ, his right hand. So God gave the orders, gave the instruction for how to do it, gave the systems, and made him go out and do it, just like God didn't come here and die on a cross. He had somebody else come and do it. That's delegation, you hear me? Because if God died, if God himself died, the world would cease to exist. There's no such thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So so my point is, 
Uh, law of attraction, speaking things to existence. You can't just hope, wish, get your little crystals and cross your fingers. You still have to, with, along with your belief and your positive thinking and all of that stuff, along with that, you still have to set systems in place to where the attraction can be had. There's no such thing as if you build it, they will come. If you build a business that is on a dead-end street, no intersection in sight, you're not getting business. You're going out of business, especially if you don't know how to drive online leads. So don't let people fool you with all of that, all right? You have to put in some type of work, at least up at the beginning, okay? Uh, so yeah. that law of attraction thing is a combination of believing, but setting things in motion to where you can be discovered and God can be able to bless. You got to give him something to bless. Like you go to church exactly. and you, you tell, you tell the pastor about your financial situation and he wickedly calls you down in front of everybody and pray that you get a job. I'm like, yo, that is not, that is not scriptural at all. <laughs> so yeah, that's not scriptural. He's praying for you to go and be a slave. Okay. That don't make no sense. Um, but yeah, before I move to the next section, uh, you know, if you have any questions, then you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me. Definitely, definitely, de definitely next session. Now, what are some income producing activities that you feel like some entrepreneurs are, are missing out from doing to, to generate oh. sales? You are awesome, man. You have awesome questions. I appreciate that. Okay. Now, I'm always thinking in terms of leverage. Um, the IPAs that I'm going to give you guys are not going to be what the average person will tell you. I'm not going to tell you to get up and check your Facebook ads every you know, morning or you know, check your emails and respond to you know, customer inquiries or anything like that, do follow-up sequences or uh, wake up and do your prospecting list that you're going to do your cold calling to or any of that. No. When you wake up in the morning, you have to be like your father. God, he sets systems, and then he put the right people in place. All right? This is creation and then leverage. All right? If you want money, okay, think of a TikTok. Think of uh, Facebook. Think of uh, YouTube. All right? So he was the guy. He, well, he is God. He created the world. And then he set systems so that it can be fruitful and multiply on its own. On its own. Mm -hmm. God only ever created one man. And then he set a system, a.k.a. Eve. He set a system to where man can multiply itself. You know, oh, God created me. No, no, no. God created Adam, and Adam was created in his image. So since Adam was created in his image, that means you were created in God's image. That doesn't mean God sat there and crafted you. He set a system to where he wouldn't have to sit here and do all the time. So if I can give anybody advice, it's to focus on not doing a janitor's job if you want to be the so-called CEO. Stop doing mm -hmm the grunt work, start being a designer, a creator like your father. So when I wake up in the morning, I get up at three, brush my teeth, wash my face, pray. And then at four, from the hours of four to about 9 a.m., those are my leverage hours. All I do is create assets, just like my father. And then I work on my leverage list. Some would call it a dream 100 list. I like to call it a leverage list because it's going to be more than that, right? So this leverage list contains people that have skills that I might not have, all right? This leverage list contains people that have audiences that don't know me yet. So those are literally what I do in the morning, all right? So just you guys listening right now. You should say one of the most profitable things you can do for your, your business, yourself, period, is to wake up in the morning and figure out how to break out of matrices. And you're going to need help. And you're not better than God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The world likes to cuddle you and put you on a pedestal, but you're not mm -hmm. better than God. So if God could use help. He used Christ to help him uh, fulfill what he needed, fulfill his will. And then even Christ, when he came here, what did he do? Did he do it on his own? No. He employed 
or he attracted, attract, attract, we use that word, attracted 12 disciples. And then what did he tell him? What did he tell them disciples? Go out and teach every nation to become disciples as well. So he literally created the first ever MLM in history, bar. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, if you think you can't get business from the Bible, that's literally the first ever MLM. You're like, all right, now that you guys are my disciples, I want you guys to go out, speak the same message, all right, give the same reward, tell them they will be able to get the kingdom, all right, recruit them, and then have them go and recruit more people into this kingdom message right here. That's the first ever MLM. So you don't do it by yourself. You don't do it. Yeah, it's, it's all in Scripture. That's why these things are successful. When I look at businesses, I... Look, we'll, a lot of people have a question, how come wicked people, if God is real, how come wicked people uh, can be successful? How come wicked people, some of the most evil people in the world are wealthy? Okay, there's a simple answer for that. Do you actually believe God is all-knowing? Uh, if you actually believe God is all-knowing and God is right, then you will believe in law. If you believe in law, the scripture says his law is perfect. What does that mean? That means that even if an evil person follows his law, it's going to work. This is why I try to tell people, quit trying to cross your fingers to be successful and figure out God's law. So even though those people are evil, you know, he said that he has a a day reserved for the wicked. Don't worry, they're going to go down eventually. But for now, they're doing his law. And he doesn't look at it like, oh, well, those people are wicked, so I'm going to make an exception for them. I'm not going to let my, my law uh, work for them. God can't lie. It's impossible for him to lie. So, so no matter who keeps his law, is going to work. So with that being said, what everybody should be figuring out now is what law should I be keeping to be successful then? <laughs> okay. Right, right. And I literally have, I have the law that you guys can keep. And then you apply these laws to scripture. I mean, you apply these scriptures, I mean, to your actual business. All right. That book on your grandmother's dang on coffee table collecting dust. You had no idea is better than every business book that you've ever come across. Every single bit. I don't care about winning friends and influence. You notice some of the best books that you read into. They always quote scripture or try to reword it into some way that they can sound wise. But the scripture says the wisdom, the wisdom of man is foolishness compared to God. And it's true. So why not just go straight to the source, okay? Because he is the one that can make you rich suddenly. God, he gives man the power to gain wealth. You heard the scripture. All right. Um, So you ready to move on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm letting you drop the gems, brother, because this is all about you. You know what I'm saying? I ask the questions you drop. You go as long as you want to go. You know, no interruptions. I'm going to help you get it out there. So what do you think about okay. chat GPT right now for for, uh, for building uh, platforms <laughs> and making money? Okay, well, that's another form of leverage. I'm happy you brought that up. Um, yeah, and I appreciate it. All praises to the Father. First of all, I'm going to give him all praises because whatever you guys are uh, liking that's coming from me, that's actually coming from him. Uh, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. I always tell people, God is my lawyer, so this ain't hate speech, it's great speech. I use him to back me up, all right? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to speak my own words. You can look up anything that I am saying. Go and cross-reference it. Go and Google it, right? All right, um, Chad GBT, like I said, that's another form of leverage. Right now, I just released the Money Highways Ranking Bank SEO course. All right. What is that? Well, if you guys don't know what SEO is, that is the art of ranking entities and assets in search engines. Okay. This will allow you to get visibility and traffic. And if you have a good um, offer set up, then that will translate to sales. So it's a very, very useful skill, no matter what type of business you have, whether you're uh, owning a flower shop or an, a free con- uh, a e-commerce shop or you sell zebra scan rugs. It doesn't matter. If you know how to rank on Google or any of these search engines like Amazon or Bing or whatever it is, if you can rank when people are searching, remember what I told you before, relevant traffic 
plus irresistible offer equals money. Those are formulaic laws, okay? Um, but ChatGPT allows us to rapidly scale our content on websites, okay? Uh, we can get 100, 200 articles done a day, and we can do that without using a dime of our own money unless we're, you know, having VAs do it or something like that. So what do I mean by that? Okay. Uh, before, before this AI wave came, SEOs, we had to create our own website content. We would have to write our own articles. So the most we would be able to push out, especially if we don't um, employ anyone to help us, with, if we're lucky, uh, maybe 10 to 15 articles a month, especially if you got a nine-to-five job. Like that stuff is exhausting, writing this stuff, especially if you're trying to rank a website in, in a niche that you don't have too much experience in. It's like all, almost impossible to pull off. But ChatGPT allows us to use certain prompts to where even if we're not an ex expert or whatever, we can plug in experts and, and prompt ChatGPT uh, in a way to where we can come with very useful and helpful uh, content for the audience. So we've been using that to get crazy amounts of ranking on the first page of Google. We rank things in, in multiple different languages. That's another uh, thing most people don't go after. They don't do the foreign SEO, even though right. there are a million different languages spoken in the U.S. and around the world. So that's an extra income stream every time you uh, tr translate your, your, your content into a different language. Um, yeah, so ChatGPT is, is awesome, just, you know, to answer that question yeah. right there. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, uh, we use it all the time over here. Speaking of article writing, you, you know, we're doing a lot of things for the website, different contents as well. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. But do you think it can be a little dangerous as well? Um, well, can a pencil be dangerous? Yeah. Can a can a machete be dangerous? Of course. Yeah, but these are all just tools. I can use machetes to cut down, as the slaves did, the sugar canes in the field just for work. Or I can go to Jamaica getting beef with somebody and chop down a leg. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, I can I can use a pencil to create you know beautiful poetry and 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 do work and everything. Or I can turn into John Wick and kill a man with a pencil. So ChatGPT yeah. itself is just a tool. Um, it is not evil. It cannot be evil. All right? It's just a tool. Now, when a person, uh, uh, this is what leverage is. If a person is already wicked, if a person already has that intent in them, they're going to find a way to get it out whether ChatGPT is here or not. It was people searching for how to create bombs and be terrorists and all of that stuff on Google uh, way long before ChatGPT came around. That doesn't make Google evil. It's just that people have evil in them, uh, and they're going to find outlets to use. So uh, this is why ChatGPT are trying to put so many different like limitations and filters based off of certain words that you'll use and everything. Um, but for the most part, no, nah, I, I don't think it's a bad thing. Great, great, great. So how do you keep yourself uh, healthy and strong as an entrepreneur? Two-part question. How do you keep yourself healthy and strong as an entrepreneur, and why do you think it's so important to stay healthy as an entrepreneur? Well, um, okay. Why it's important to stay healthy as an entrepreneur is because um, we all know that we could be gone at any day. Any, any day – Every day is a good day. Every day is a God day. Every day you wake up, you realize you could have not waken up. But we're so entitled and ungrateful that we don't mm -hmm. realize, even if, you, even if you had the worst day of your life today, today is still a good day because he gave you an opportunity to have another day, even though yesterday you know for a fact you did wicked things, whether you had wicked thoughts. Maybe you saw somebody's chick and was like, dang, dude, if I wasn't cool with him, I'd definitely hit that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yo, <laughs> like nobody is, nobody is having perfect days. So when you wake up the next day, 
you know what I'm saying? You you need to be grateful. So I started the first day off. I, I, I mean, I started the day off grateful that he allowed me to try again the next day. Um, all right. So why is important, uh, you said, to be healthy as an entrepreneur? Right. Okay. Well, like, like I said, you don't know if you're going to be here tomorrow. And um, I always use the reference tombstone pizza. When we were growing up as kids, that commercial used to say, what do you want on your tombstone? All right. right. And I always, I always imagine, uh, you know, you pass away and then you're placed in a cemetery. Nobody knows where you're buried. You're side by side with a whole bunch of nobodies. It was nothing special about you. No matter how many chicks you bagged, no matter how G you was, no matter where you held it down at and all of that extra stuff, right? The scripture says uh, a man that builds a good name, like your, your name is far above rubies. So you should be spending your life trying to be valuable to people and build a gift, all right? But if you don't keep yourself healthy, you can take yourself out before you get to see what your gift can be birthed into. So that's one of the reasons why I feel like we should stay healthy as entrepreneurs. We need to live long upon the earth in order to present our gift to more people and make a bigger impact, therefore creating a better name. So health has a lot to do with that. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Oh. Great answers. Great answers, great answers, because I know a lot of entrepreneurs, man, they're not they neglecting themselves, but they're chasing the money. They're chasing the bag, and, you know, it's, it's constantly yeah, going yeah. And, going. and then all of a sudden, they're eating like crap. They're traveling all over the place. Yeah. And, you know, you know, it's a lot of traveling. It can have a, a very negative effect on your body. So it's yeah. like, you know, they're exercising. They got the bear gut. You know, they they out socializing, they're going to networking event. This is Atlanta, bro. So I can tell I see it firsthand. <laughs> like, man, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> You know, they had yeah. parties, they had day parties, they had night parties, and they said, oh, we networking, we networking. But I'm like, yo, you, you, you're you going to spend more money on health care. As soon as you make money, you're going to spend exactly. more money on health care if you're not exactly. taking care of something. That's, that's crazy. You are, so, you are, you are correct, man. Um, and and that's, that's the truth. Like, it sucks. You say, what, what profit the man to gain the world only to lose a soul. You can get all the stuff you want, but if you don't like do what's right by his temple, then like you won't even get to enjoy it. Like dude was talking about a lot of entrepreneurs that finally make it. And then they spend all their money on health and stuff. Like some of them can't even get out of bed and stuff. Right. Um, and, and that sucks. And I have firsthand experience on both sides of those, you know, struggling with uh weight and, and all of that extra stuff, getting so zoned into the business, you'll tell yourself, all right, when I when I achieve this, then I'll, you know, like do this or do that. No, 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 no. This is why you have to wake up correctly. All right, so that'll bring us into the other question that you asked. What do I do and what am I currently doing? Currently, I am losing more weight than ever, and uh, I have my whole family doing this. The best, in my opinion, because, you know, anybody can have one, right? My opinion, the best uh, so-called, I say lifestyle. I don't really like the diet situation because when you say diet, that that is an admission that you wanted to be temporary, and that means you're admitting that you want to go back to eating the crap, right? So the best right. lifestyle I can think of for an entrepreneur would be a combination of OMAD and carnivore. Now, why do I choose OMAD and carnivore? For those who don't know what OMAD is, that means one meal a day. All right. All right. So, uh, um, and carnivore is literally just no carbs. Um, it, it's like a more extreme version of the ketogenic diet. It's just all meat, poultry, you know, fish, whatever, blah, blah, blah. All right. Well, first of all, we know that uh, um, a lot of the times carbs can get you cloudy. Your your mind is cloudy and stuff, which is why even people that count carbs, they, you know, the entrepreneurs, they, they fast until they're done doing the bulk of their entrepreneurial work in the mornings and stuff. And then they'll eat their carbs and stuff like that. So we just go ahead and get the carbs out of there completely, you know, uh, which you'll lose weight as well, but it, it, it creates, uh, so much clarity in your mind and you can stay zoned in and focused. You don't have to have 
music playing while you're working. You don't have to have a book playing. You don't have to have a million tabs open on your computer or nothing. You, you're like a freaking uh, a, a machine, like the most um, natural version of a human when you get rid of all the processed foods and the sugars and the crack that's in the food and, and all of that. So, and, and eating it once a day, you're already sa- satiated because it's real food. Empty carbs, you have to constantly eat over and over. This is why you see animals grazing all day, all right? Nothing against vegans or anybody like that, but if you look at all the animals that we make excuses, well, the gorillas are big and they and they eat plants. Yeah, but they got to sit in the, in, the, in the dang old jungle. You see them sitting on their butt. And they just got to eat constantly to keep that machine running. They have to always be sitting there eating. Horses have to always graze. Cows have to always, giraffes always. And when you, as a human, are on just nothing but a raw fruit or a a vegan diet, you have to eat a lot too. But a carnivore, I can wake up. I can fast all the way to 10 a.m. My wife can bring me one piece of fish and maybe a steak and a half. And as long as it has my fats in there, I'm literally good into the entire next day. Food is created for fuel, not for leisure or pleasure. I'm sorry, all these Gordon Ramsay chef chopped videos and TV shows and all of that stuff turned it into idolatry. But food is fuel. Every other animal knows that but us. So with humans... In order to be the most elite version of ourselves, we have to remember that food is not a circus. It's not an event. You have a purpose that you need to, the, uh, need to handle. So if you can not really even focus on that, it can help you throughout the day. But if you're constantly trying to figure out what you're going to eat, constantly cooking, getting up and stopping and cooking or, or doing all this extra stuff, it can take you away from what you need to do. Because when you take a lunch break, it takes you a little second to get back in a groove of work when you go back and sit down, majority of people. But if you can eat once a day, and I'm not talking about starving yourself. I'm talking about literally being completely satisfied. Like, we have no appetite. We'll eat once, and I can literally fast for two days after that. Think about this. All right, we'll bring up the gorillas, but let's bring up the lions. Uh, not your, your little pet cats in the house that you have on processed food, too. I'm talking about the lions, the beast with the perfectly clean teeth out there with no toothbrush. All right? These people will hunt. Well, I say people. These, <laughs> these animals will hunt sometimes maybe once or twice a week. But look how muscular they are. Look how perfect their physique are once or twice a week. And they'll eat like midday and then they'll take a nap. They don't have to eat three times a day. They don't even have to eat every day. And, and it's like that for most of the strongest predators in the world. But we'll, we'll make right. exceptions uh, with, some, with some other animals that are plant eaters, right? But so I feel for an entrepreneur, in order to fulfill your purpose, uh, uh, things need to work in systems. It should be effortless. And carnivore diet is it, so simple. It takes it back to where you, you're not idolizing or pedestalizing food. I can eat once a day and focus on my purpose the rest. Understood, understood. A lot of entrepreneurs, you know, they would try to go into uh, one meal a day, but the way how the schedule is set up, around business meetings and networking and, you know, all those different things like that. Once the alcohol come in play, you got to feed the alcohol now. Now you want something salty, you want something sugary, Mm -hmm. socializing, you know, all those things come into play. And I'm like, yo, you got to cut back on the alcohol. Man, I'm just trying to put in, you know, I've seen it so many times, and I'd be like, no, you don't need to drink alcohol to sell something. You don't need to drink alcohol. You know, you're really involved into your business because this what this doing right now, you know, especially like it's crazy, especially if you're dealing from a chronic lifestyle condition like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease. Oh, yeah. You, know, it's, it's, you, you, you got your stress is so surmounted too because you're trying so hard to uh, impress people. You're trying so hard to land the client. You're stressing yourself out. Now you need to self-medicate. Now you need the alcohol. Now you need to 
it's just a vicious cycle, man, over and over and over again. That's why I like asking people the question, how important is it to you, you know, to stay healthy as an entrepreneur? Because a year from now, two years from now, even five years along, uh, uh, down the line, you keep going on like that, you, you're pretty much going to fail. Yeah, you might get some sales, you might get some money, but mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you know, you're going to feel bad. Like, you know, when you think about the days of Steve Jobs, Steve Jobs, man, he would have traded anything to have his health, right? Exactly. He did anything. All that money could not save him. When you think about uh, people like Robin, Robin Williams, the comedian, happy, 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 had everything he needed, but guess what? He was depressed on the back end. You see what I'm exactly. saying? So, you know, we, we, we as entrepreneurs, we got to check in with ourselves daily. You know, why am I feeling this way? Am I stressed? Am I emotional? Why am I eating this way? Why am I drinking this way? You know, we got to check in with ourselves. Yeah, we're stressed, but are you meditating? Are you praying? Are you sitting quietly? Are you releasing a lot of that negative energy? Do you know your, your stress triggers? What are your coping skills? You know, I mean, are you detoxifying your life? Not just about, you know, what you're eating, but what you're listening to. Who you yeah. tune in into. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like you turn into who you tune into. Yes. You hey, know? man. Can I add something to that real quick? Go ahead. Go ahead, King. I appreciate that, man. I'll praise it to the Father. All right. So, listen, I tell my kids, my wife, and, and, and my students, yeah, it's very simple, man. Like, time works like this. Uh, uh, he said the hearts of men are wicked. We were born in in sinful flesh, so our default is wickedness. So what you just said, you made a major point. So I tell them all the time, if you don't feel in, you know, if, if my, you know, even on an off day or a vacation or something like that, you should still structure your day, guys. You should never just freestyle, be willy nilly with it, because if you don't fill your time with something positive, the devil will fill those empty time slots for you. He will, mm. and like and you, like you said, that it will usually include your your alcohol, uh, your uh, any of your other lusts, your fornication, and all of that. Have you ever heard of a guy named Alex Becker before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I like what he said. He was talking about like. He was talking about alcohol and why, you know, even though he's young and successful, he don't drink anymore. He he said because, yo, after going out with his homeboys and actually, like, going hard, you know, um, it usually takes him about three days to recoup and get back to the mood to even want to get back to business. And if you're trying to be successful, if you're doing that once a week, you're never going to have any type of success, uh, any consistency with your business results. You know, like who really wants to have to plan for two or three extra days every time they have some fun to be able to get back to work? This is why a lot of successful businesses have plundered, because they'll have these CEOs who can't put their lust under subjection. You know, uh, um, and, and so, yeah, you made a huge point right there. man. Yeah, it's, it's a major thing, man, because, you know, we run ourselves ragged because I know the way how, like, this is the world of information right now. Information is currency, right? So everybody's okay. saying, oh, you know, you know, I got a course. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. So, we, you know, we, we, we're trying to be competitive. We're trying to make our brand stand out, you know, all these different things like that. But it's really stressing us out. And one thing I had to learn, I had to learn how to let go of uh, all that and just, you know, put myself out there, stop drinking, stop smoking the weed, you know, I went and mm-hmm. got married last year. You know, I just hey, had to streamline. Thank you, brother. You know, I had to, you know, streamline my life. And then just on, on the 18th was my first year uh, wedding anniversary. And, we, you know, we took some time off and whatnot like that. So it's like I really, once I stopped drinking, everything turned around. I stopped drinking a drink. I was like, man, it's been since September last year. I haven't had one drop. Because one thing I know man. for a fact, as I'm running this business, the more alcohol I was consuming, the, the, the alcohol going to start consuming me. And you made an yeah. excellent point when you said you, sometimes it takes three days to get back focused. I'll wake up in the morning, man. I'd be like, I got things to do, but I'm not. My cognitive awareness 
was not at a hundred percent. I was not my neurons were were not firing up, you know, the way I needed them to fire up. And I felt I was sluggish mentally, sluggish physically, and I was like, man, okay, this is a problem. I got to stop it. And I just, you know, I prayed about it. You know, I just stopped cold turkey, man. Like, I praise for the most high, man. Man, I was like, okay, this is it. And since then, you know, business has gotten better. I became better uh, uh, as a better father, better husband, you know, better business owner. And, you know, we, we, we doing it now, you know. So we just have to just eliminate, eradicate a lot of the yes. vices, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, yeah. And, and, you know, it's the crazy thing about it, like I listen to you, my brother, and, you know, you, you, you speak so well on everything. But one thing, you know, I resonate you know, because we were talking about we need to leave this country. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we said, yeah. We said that like two years ago. And yeah, uh, I'm, Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I, I didn't want to cut you off. Go ahead. Because uh, I was like, what, you know, we were talking about Brazil, you know, uh, uh, Belize, you know, getting mm-hmm. property and all that stuff like that, man. You know, I had a, I had a client that came back from uh, Panama. You know, mm-hmm. and he was like, man, it's nice. And I said, yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Now here I am talking with you, and you waiting on you waiting on to become a res a full time resident over there in Panama. And you know, uh, I was just reading an article today, like the uh, Department of Agriculture and um, Drug Administration here in this country had already approved for a company to use uh, animal cells to reproduce chicken, reproduce meat ah. in different factories. You know, and I was saying, man, you know, we are really producing for years now a lot of food products that's high in sodium, high in sugar, and a lot of these chemicals mm-hmm. and stuff like that that's really banned in other countries. Yes, and yes, it is. I, 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 I heard something so profound like two months ago that really messed me up, and I never, I never really thought about it like this. It was like the Food and Food and Drug Administration will approve certain foods, say, "Hey, this is great for you to eat. It's approved, but the more you consume, eventually, the more you're going to end up sick. And this is when we give you the drug." Food and drug. Exactly. So when I exactly. read the article today, I was like, holy crap, they're going to start uh, uh, making uh, chicken and meat products, and it's going to come out just like bologna, and they're going to start making sausages and uh, uh, cutlets and all these different things and say, hey, it's safe to eat. They're telling you it's safe <laughs> to eat. And yeah. this, and this this country, we believe, we put our trust in our government to say it's safe to eat. But you look, look what you just wrote. Look what you just yeah, wrote. Yeah, it's, it's garbage, man. It's garbage. It is a flywheel. It's a perfect business. Uh, you know, they they you know pay the farmers to grow the crap, and the farmers distribute it to the grocery stores. And then when you're eating it and getting sick, you head back to the hospitals and the hospitals get paid to send you to the, uh, you know, the pharmacies and get your medications. And then once you die off from that crap, uh, they get paid when you get buried and charging your family for any debt that you have. So it's a perfect business. It is not in America's best interest to keep you healthy. Now, let me go back to what you were saying. Um, um, with uh see my bad um <laughs> forgot i forgot oh uh, <laughs> one of the things you said I, I i remember this you were saying uh about leaving that country all right mm-hmm. so here here's this is one of the matrixes the bible talks about breaking down strongholds okay strongholds for la- vain philosophies of men all right when we were we have to remember something that's so called black people i mean even the 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 people that own that country over there ne- didn't really own that country. They're not from there either. Okay, we're definitely not from there. We didn't go there on vacation. We didn't go there willingly, no matter what they're trying to rewrite the dang on history books to say. So, do you do not own? I mean, uh, you do not pledge allegiance to the dang on flag. 
is not yours. And I know you don't feel like it's yours either, do you? Exactly. You don't feel like it when you're getting pulled over, but we're not going to turn it into that type of podcast. But the reason I bring that up is because a lot of us, when, when they see me or my family or any other people that look like us living abroad, they feel this immense fear like, oh, what if something bad happens if I were to leave? Like everything is safe there. Mm-hmm. All right. Like I had a million family members that never traveled before trying to talk to me about the cartel in Mexico. Oh, how are you going to get kidnapped? Do you go there? Blah, blah, blah. This. I'm like, y'all ain't never been there. You understand what I'm talking about? What are you talking about? And talking about kidnapping. I mean, I remember when we were living in, in Missouri, all you heard on on people's phones was those dang on alerts going off uh, with, with kids getting like, like snatched and stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm talking about uh drugs i mean dude i'm from the block i'm from south side st louis i mean it's drugs everywhere so everywhere. what are you talking about like america is safe that's false advertising so god created the world for our sakes if i can put that out there for the people he created the world not just your block the world so wake up uh, he allowed the invention of the internet to actually happen so that means you can work and do whatever you know how to do from anywhere in the world and actually leverage the fact that you are from the United States because our dollar goes very far in different countries. So while you're sitting there struggling, and the, the funny part about it is even the freaking rich people in America are still struggling and going through crap that the poor people go through. That makes no sense. What's the point of getting uh, um, successful and wealthy if you're still going through the stuff that the dudes on the block are going through? So you 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 harness uh, uh, the powers there, and, and you you take the skills that you gain there, and then you go elsewhere. All right. So you you get out of there. Don't think that you are betraying anything or anybody. That's not our land. Oh, we built we built America up to what it. Okay, you built Egypt up too. (laughs) What that mean? All right. I don't see you over there trying to take Egypt back. All right. right. Neither one of those are our land. Neither one of those are our lands. So stop growing attachments to them and and live a a, a life of of freedom. Uh, The scripture says, seek peace and pursue it. So if you're not feeling like you're finding peace or if peace is even possible in that hell hole over there, then you should make plans to exodus the same way uh, Moses did. Make plans Mm -hmm. to leave. And you don't need perfection for you to leave. I had I had a couple brothers when I was in Mexico uh, that I was living near, and they were literally just teaching English online with no degree, making about ten dollars an hour, getting to uh, work their own hours, and they didn't have to have any experience. They just woke up, chose their hours, and was teaching English to like Japanese kids and, and Spanish kids and stuff like that from the computer, and that was enough to pay their rent and do what they needed to do because our money, okay, $20, uh, 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 $2 in Mexico is like 20 bucks. Okay, so that, that just giving you that. Just giving yep. you that. If you know that, that $2, two U.S. dollars is pretty much the equivalent of 20 bucks. Right, and the U.S. dollar in the states right now is probably equivalent of fifty cents or less. Exactly. So that means you're working more and making less. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. So get up and go. Don't. Oh well, let me prep. No, no, no. If if God gave you the revelation that you're not free, you do, look. You hop up and you go. King David, he he thought on his ways, saw his errors, and the scripture said he made haste to turn and keep the command. He didn't say, you know what, man, I get to that. Or you know, maybe sometime next year. No. When I when we realized when we were down in Florida that the border was open in Mexico because we were, we're from Missouri, and right when the scam the scamdemic started, it was March sixteenth. I remember it like it was yesterday. 
right when the scamdemic started, we was like, yo, now we need to get to Medellin, Colombia. That's where we were planning to move for three years. And it just never happened, right? But we had our tickets for Medellin, and we uh, flew down to Florida, and we were about to make our connecting flight and everything. And right on the morning, I think it was the 17th, right on our flight at 1030, they closed the borders. And we were like, no, we're trapped in the freaking matrix. No, no. And And then so we ended up staying in Florida for two months. Everything was shut down, closed down. It was hot as a mug. And I thought we was done. And my wife came to me one day and she said, did you know that Mexico has been open this whole time? I said, I don't need to hear any more. Book the flight Let's now. Mm-hmm. Immediately. That's how you do it. Because you don't know. If God, Listen, God gives you revelations for a reason. It says, mm-hmm. by God, actions are weighed. So he determines whether or not you really want something. Are you really truthful about this entrepreneur stuff? Do you really want to be saved and all? He determines that based off of your actions, your actions. And then he deals with you accordingly, right? So if we really wanted to be said to get, get out of there, it didn't matter what country. They could have, she could have told me Kuwait or Iraq was open. And I was like, I would have been like, all right, let's, let's go. So she said, she said Mexico. And we immediately, we got to Playa del Carmen. This was when everybody was, that's why I call it the scamdemic. Oh, if you get on the bus or a plane, you're going to get, I'll call it snowvid. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We was up in the, we was in the Greyhound because we weren't waiting for no, I was trying to get like away. You understand? I wasn't waiting. They would say, oh, the flight don't leave until this. I'm like, well, we will ride down there. You know what I'm saying? We was on planes, all type of stuff, right? And 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 God protected us the entire time uh, from anything, man. So I, I just wanted to say, Say that, y'all, because y'all, if you want to go, right, then go. You understand? He said, exactly. He said, flee the land of the north. And what do you think the land of the north is? What's the land of the north on a map? Okay, so (laughs) flee the land of the north, because when he comes back to exact revenge, that is definitely the place he's going to start it. Okay, and I wouldn't want to be there. And um, (laughs) when that happens. If you believe in that type of thing. Uh, uh, but, yeah. All right. So I have the law, the last law, because I don't know how much time we have left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got some time. Let me say this right quick, man. You're listening to another episode of the Your Best Lifestyles International Health and Wellness Podcast. And I have the, the, the distinguished pleasure of talking to Mr. David Robinson. He is the owner and CEO of Anti-Job University teaching entrepreneurship through asset ownership so that you can one day be rich enough to own a ship. <laughs> <laughs> Instead heavy, of heavy, being heavy, so heavy, broke. Man. Hey, man, listen, we appreciate you. Any final words? And then tell everybody how they can connect with you, how they, how they can find you on social media, e- websites, emails, any way how they can contact you and follow you, subscribe. Yes, sir. I, I, uh, one fi- uh, a little final word. Uh, okay. But what he just said about asset ownership, y'all, um, it is extremely important. Even if you hide those assets, I teach my students how to hide certain assets and to own them or control them from afar. Uh, so that people can't seize them. You see what happened to Andrew Tate. So sometimes, especially in, and when the devil runs the world right now, owning assets is, is kind of difficult, but it's still better than not owning assets. Remember this, guys. If you don't uh, create leverage, then you're somebody else's leverage, okay? Mm-hmm. Then you're being used as somebody else's leverage. And one of the – okay, a lot of people are like, ooh, what's the best way to make money in 2023? I'll give you the best way to make money from so on and so forth. It does not matter what the year is. Uh, you create assets, platforms that are beneficial to multiple parties, okay, like directories, uh, social media networks, these type of things. In the Asset Empire, uh, that is, you can find that, and you can go to assetempireaccess.site, assetempireaccess.site, okay? Uh, we teach you to clone out the most successful 
type of platforms and assets out there that are apps and everything like that. And we teach you how to put them in front of the proper audiences and get instant monetization for those. Why? Because asset ownership does liberate you. All right. Now, creation of a platform, okay, and then user-generated content. This is exactly the formula that God created, okay? So he created the first man, and then he set up the system for it to be user-generated uh, <laughs> On, on earth, all right? After that, we, like, multiplied on our own and filled the earth. Do y'all understand that? So all he had to do was create the platform and the rules. All TikTok had to do was create the platform. I mean, come on, pay attention to success. They are not posting TikTok videos. They don't wake up and be like, you know what, this is my content plan. They own the platform, they incentivize you through the success of others, and then you want to go and create all of this content for them. And they get instant monetization through all of your hard work. So this is why I teach asset ownership and uh, people to apply leverage, allow these people to do, create all the content for them. Okay, Facebook does not have to rank their own articles to do their SEO. Why? User-generated content. All day, you're posting on there how you feel or what you ate for lunch and all of that garbage and stuff, right? So you're literally creating endless amount of content for that website, okay? So how do you do this? Okay. Now, last thing, and then we're going to go because I know he, he has uh, some things to do, guys. All right. This is God's law of profit. Take this with you into any business venture you're going in. It does not matter, and you're going to be successful, okay? Breaking down of Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. That is the breed, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion scripture. A lot of us think being fruit, fruitful and multiplying just have to do with uh, sexual reproduction, Okay, remember what he said. He said he would direct all thy paths. That means you get business as well from the Bible. Okay, so be fruitful. What does that mean? That's the first step to business, be fruitful. It means to innovate or to produce something, to create. The first line in the Bible tells you about our Father. He says that he is the creator of all things. He told you that for a reason. If you're creating in his image, what are you supposed to be doing? Being a creator. OK, so you innovate and you produce things that are valuable to a specific market that can help them feed their needs. You feed the flock. All right. So you create a product or a service that can serve people in order to be the greatest salesperson. You should first be the greatest servant. Even Christ himself washed the feet. He was humble enough to wash the feet of the poor and of the prophets. Can you believe that? Which one of us right now would wash each other's feet? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Come on. All right. Yeah. So you, you, you produce something, you create something. That's step one. All right. Step two is to multiply. McDonald's did this uh, masterfully. All right. How do you scale? Uh, create your uh, uh, scaling plan. All right. Scale your business. So how do you recreate that product over and over your assembly line to where you can get it perfect every single time? And we do that with digital products. We figure that out. Like, OK, if I create this course uh, right the first time, I can like sell this over and over. OK, so be fruitful. That's create something valuable. Multiply. All right. Duplicate it. Replicate it. All of that. Now. Three, replenish the earth. And this is usually where entrepreneurs are stuck at. They don't know how to get mass distribution. This is usually where artists, musicians are stuck at. They don't know how to get mass distribution. Okay? So they, they get on, under these slave deals and these slave contracts because other people that do control the distribution and have figured it out, they know that you don't know this. So if you spend time to figure out your distribution plan, I mean, we have the internet now. You should nobody should be signing anything with any dang on body, right? Okay, so be fruitful. You create whatever that is—a product, service, album, whatever it is. Uh, multiply. You replicate it. All right. You figure out how to do it in, in mass scale, like you know where you can have enough supply when the demand is there. 
Okay, replenish the earth. You distribute it. Okay, figure out your distribution plan. How are you going to get it out to the masses? How are you going to uh, chase the four corners of the earth with your plan? How is it going to be in every store, on every website, whatever it is? Okay, then you subdue the earth. Okay, how, what does that mean? Achieve market dominance. Overpower the market by creating irresistible offers so unique that they cut the legs out from under anyone else that would consider themselves a competitor. I'll give you a real-life example. If I know that other universities uh, make the bulk of their money from tuition, one way for me to cut the legs out of them, up from under them, is to create a no-tuition school. That will immediately make me stand out, immediately allow a lot of their uh, future students to consider me instead, even if they have a, a bigger brand at the time. If I can offer the same uh, subjects there, uh, uh, what do you call it, um, accredi ed accreditation or whatever, I can't even think of the word, right? Uh, if I can offer those okay. same things and they don't have Accredit you're right. If I can offer all of that without having to uh, put them under the contract of tuition and everything, I mean, that's an irresistible offer right there, right? So now right. I cut the legs out from under them. I took their superpower away. So now they can't replicate what you've done, and they will not be able to survive, okay, uh, which makes you the only one customers can choose for whatever it is you service, okay? Now, the last step have dominion. That's different from subduing, okay? Now it means have dominion. Now that you've made it clear that no one else is like you or can reverse engineer your unique offer, you monopolize. You monopolize. You seize complete takeover. Now you control how the market moves through market monopolies to the point that all others are left trying to keep up and copy. So you're allowed to set new industry standards the same way that a new king establishes new rule or law when they, when they get into their tenure. So what, a, what is a good example of that? That would be Amazon. There was a lot of e-commerce sites and stuff before, but no one else was able to do it like Amazon, and they use these biblical business principles. He cut the legs out from under them by becoming the online Walmart. He didn't profit for like almost 20 years in order to be able to go lower in, 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 in uh, cost and profit than other, all of the other companies, the Ebays, all of that. And when he was able to achieve market dominance with the subduing step, he was able to wash everybody out. And then now he has dominion with Amazon. That's the first thing you think of when you want to buy anything online. See, biblical business principles, they work. I don't just pull this out of my butt. They are actually here. And the ones that will use these, okay, will attract. This is the true law of attraction right here, Genesis 1 and 28. If you use this, everything that you want in business will be yours all right so we teach you how to create assets they don't have to be on some gargantuan level uh, uh, uh you know or to try to like uh, do all of this extra stuff but we create uh these assets in order for you to have little insurance policies like a moat around yourself uh these these assets are created we teach you how to monetize them and they surround you with passive income you get certain audience audiences on these platforms and you make uh, money through the ads on there. You make money through the partnerships, the purchases on there. You get a percentage of everything on there. Um, and, yeah, that's the Asset Empire. And you can find that at assetempireaccess.site. If you just want to check out my teachings, uh, you know, that is on YouTube. And you can just search Anti-Job University. Mm. And it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful channel, a lot of information out there that, uh, that Mr. Robinson is sharing with the world, and he's located in Panama right now, so he can work from anywhere in the world he want to work in. So it's a beautiful thing. Make sure you go subscribe, download, sign up to court for courses, the whole nine, man. All right, so awesome show, awesome show. David Robinson 
owner and CEO, Blessings King, uh, Anti-Job University. Make sure you guys go check it out, man. If you know me, I'm only going to bring on and highlight empowering individuals who's going to give you the information that you can use to explore new horizons in your business, in your personal life, in your professional life, in your health, you know, uh, in your wellness, all the great stuff. We're not going to have the fluff uh, content or individuals coming on who's going to just BS you around, man, just for the show. That's not what we're all about. We vet people when they come on. And, look, let me tell you something, man. A lot of people that we have on this show is so powerful. They may not be the quote-unquote people who you used to see on mainstream, but they're just as powerful. They get money or more money just as much as the person who you who you who you idolize. Forget about that. The people who you need to be contacting with or being in contact with and subscribing are the people, man, that's you know, you, you, you don't really know. You know what I'm saying? They're not really, you know, household names to you, but they're pillars in their community. They're pillars in their family lives. They're pillars in the Internet community as well. And they perform on the world stage, man, in a, in a magnificent and glorious way. I've learned so much. Uh, i got a new friend right now. And, you know, oh, I'm going to apply the, the, the biblical principles as well. You know, and it's, it's, just, it's just dope thing, man. We're super excited to have you here. Uh, Mr. Robinson is is a dope, a uh, dope show, and we went over we went over we went over our time purposely. <laughs> you see, we went over the time purposely, bro. I pray you for the most keep... time. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. You know, it's it's normally forty five minutes to sixty minutes, but it's an hour and a half because you know what the content is so trill, and we want this chair everything that we're able to share within the, you know, in the, in, the, in the time that we have. So, you know, I appreciate your time. I know you're super busy. Uh, gratitude for sharing all the information and coming on to the show, man. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, man, I am Terrence Hutchinson. Your life, your best lifestyle, if you want to be a guest, you can go to www.yourbestlifestyles.com, call the 800 number, 800 800- Four eight four nine one nine four, or email me at um, your be- info at yourbestlifestyles dot com. Check us out or bodybrocket dot com, or even at o robinson pr media group at gmail uh, dot com. Look, you're doing great things, man. You know we 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 we're climbing up the health and wellness charts right now. You know we're on all platforms. If you want to advertise with us. Cool. You want to sponsor our programs, you know, subscribe to our programs, all these different things. If you have a business, you have a product, you have a service, and you really want to advertise, we do these ads. We have these ads, quick turnaround within 24 to 48 hours, depending on depending on ad and depending on where you're at in the world. So the ads are pretty much ran on top of every show and behind every show, depending on what it is. And we're going to get it out, 60, 30, 30 seconds to 60-second ad to get it out there to the world, and we're going to play it. We're going to share it all on our social media platforms to make sure that you get the, some extra exposure that you need, right, to get it out there, man. It's a beautiful thing. So we thank you so much. We thank you to our wonderful guest, Mr. David Robinson, and uh, we're going to check you guys on the next one. Make sure you share this podcast out to all your entrepreneur friends or even your nine-to-five workers who want to be entrepreneurs and they want to just quit their job because they feel like a slave, they tired, and all that stuff like that, man. That old uh, business model as far as working 40 hours a week for 40 years, that's been dead, man. That's dead, that's dead, that's dead. Okay, let's get this money. You know, international money like like Mr. Robinson doing. He in Panama, y'all. He working from anywhere he want to work. Well, you just said he was on his way to Columbia. <laughs> he, ain't waiting. Yeah, he ain't waiting. So we appreciate you guys, man. We we know that you're going to enjoy this show. 
and uh, share it out with your friends, man. Let's hear this beat right quick. I love this beat. You too. <laughs> 